The visible universe is only about 5% of the total mass energy that exists in the universe. The remaining 95% are invisible objects that cannot be detected using any tools. One of these invisible objects is dark matter. Dark matter is believed to account for more than 80% of the total mass in the universe. That is more than four times the mass of all visible objects in the universe, which is only about 20% of all matter in the universe. Dark matter is called dark because it does not interact with any electromagnetic waves, which means that this object cannot be seen by humans and only interacts gravitationally with objects in the universe. However, there is one material that is a strong candidate for dark matter. This material is neutrinos. Neutrinos are very small particles that have no electrical charge. Neutrinos had been estimated to exist by Wolfgang Pauli in 1930. Meanwhile, the name neutrino itself was proposed by Enrico Fermi, which means the small neutron. These neutrino particles are very difficult to detect because they interact very weakly with other particles. Actually, when it was first proposed by Pauli, the existence of neutrinos was only used to fulfill the law of conservation of energy and momentum in reactions involving beta decay. To that extent, neutrinos are only an interesting discovery insofar as they can secure the conservation laws, but its existence is no longer in doubt. Currently, there are two different opinions regarding the mass of neutrinos. Some think that neutrinos have no rest mass, while others think that neutrinos have a very small rest mass. Now, the second opinion is gaining more support. However, experiments carried out around the world have only been able to obtain an upper limit on the neutrino mass of around 65 electron volt. Compare that with an electron mass of about 531,000 electron volt. So, from experiments, it is still possible to obtain evidence that neutrinos have no rest mass. On the other hand, measurements of the arrival time of photon and neutrino bursts from an active supernova are being carried out. If there is a time lag between the two arriving on Earth, then it can be concluded that neutrinos move slower than photons which have no rest mass, and this indicates that neutrinos have rest mass. But if the two come together, it means that the neutrino is moving as fast as the photon, and this indicates that the neutrino also does not have rest mass like the photon. But unfortunately, this kind of experiment is technically difficult to carry out. This is because we don't know whether photons and neutrinos were ejected at that moment from the supernova. If neutrinos did have rest mass, then the implications would be far-reaching. The first is in the field of cosmology. Some cosmologists believe that neutrinos with a rest mass, even though they are very small, are the solution to the missing mass in the universe. Neutrinos with a rest mass are one candidate for what cosmologists call dark matter. The Big Bang created about a billion photons for every baryon. But these photons have zero rest mass, and based on Einstein's mass-energy equivalence, they only account for about 1 over 10,000 of the true density of the universe. The Big Bang also produced neutrinos in more or less the same number as photons. Because that, like photons, the ratio of neutrinos to baryons is about 1 billion, so their gravitational influence on the dynamics of the universe will be quite important even though their individual masses are very small compared to particles such as protons and electrons. Electrons have a mass of about 500,000 electron volts or about 10 to the power minus 30 kilograms. If neutrinos were the dark matter in the universe that makes the universe expand at a critical rate, then each neutrino would have a mass of about tens of electron volts, or less than one over ten thousandth of the mass of an electron. Because neutrinos are very, very light, these particles can move at speeds close to the speed of light. Particles moving so rapidly would be very difficult to bind together into clumps by gravitational bonds, and in the early stages of the expansion of the universe, they would be scattered in all directions and uniformly, so that their distribution in space would be homogeneous. The presence of these particles will also smooth out any irregularities in the distribution of baryon matter. 
As the universe expands and cools, neutrinos will be distributed more evenly and sparsely, and their speed will decrease. They will move slowly enough to allow the growth of irregularities due to gravitational pull to begin. And at this time, the initial structure of the galaxy is formed. These structures do not have a cluster or galaxy scale because neutrinos would be homogenized on these relatively small scales. The first structures that will appear in a universe dominated by neutrinos are at the supercluster scale, which are shaped like sheets and filaments surrounded by voids. In a neutrino dominated universe, the dark era would last for approximately 1 billion years until superclusters collapsed and broke apart into galaxies. But this neutrino model has serious drawbacks. In this scenario, superclusters will break up into clusters, which will then break up into galaxies, and then galaxies will break up into stars. All this takes time, and computer simulations show that such superclusters will not form until the universe expands rapidly enough. Neutrinos in the right mass range cannot form gravitational condensations or thickenings on a galactic scale. This is because neutrinos have very small masses, even close to zero in some models. This small mass means neutrinos can have high speeds, which makes them less likely to be clumped together by gravity on small scales, such as galaxy formation. The very small mass makes the gravitational effects of neutrinos weak on small scales. In contrast, at larger scales in the universe, such as the formation of very large cosmological structures, such as cosmic filaments or galaxy clusters, the gravitational impact of neutrinos becomes more significant. Although the masses of individual neutrinos are very small due to their enormous number in the universe, their contribution to total gravity becomes significant on larger scales. This emerging weakness would be overcome if the dominant dark matter consisted of cold particles. This is called cold dark matter. The term cold means that the dark matter moves at a relatively slow speed compared to neutrinos, so that it is not as diffuse and uniform on a galactic scale as neutrinos. Cold dark matter with lower velocities and greater mass has the potential to form the structure of galaxies and galaxy clusters. Cold dark matter has the property of interacting with significant gravitational forces. This means that they sense and contribute to gravitational forces that influence the movement and distribution of matter in the universe. Gravitational interactions are the main interactions that allow cold dark matter to form large-scale structures such as galaxies, galaxy clusters, and cosmic filaments. Then. The next characteristic is to move at a relatively low speed. One of the reasons why they are called cold is because cold dark matter particles are believed to have much slower speeds than light particles such as neutrinos. This relatively low speed allows them to gather under the influence of gravity and form structures in the universe. Although cold dark matter has the advantage of forming large-scale structures, and is the main component of dark matter in most accepted cosmological models, it is important to remember that this is a theoretical model that is still under development. There are several open questions in cosmological physics related to the nature of dark matter, and research continues to understand the exact role of the various components of dark matter in the universe. In order to understand dark matter, scientists conduct a variety of experiments and observations including experiments in underground laboratories to look for signs of dark matter and deep sky observations to measure the distribution of matter in the universe. The combination of experimental data and theoretical research will help us better understand the role of each component of dark matter in the universe.